Hi, my name is Jason. Delighted to be here today with you, uh, with my colleague Kian. We're both clinicians working in Jigsaw and, and here today just to talk about our understanding of, of, of working in a trauma-informed way in, in schools um, and acknowledging the, 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 the job that the teachers have. So, Kian, schools are obviously so important for children, young people's life. They offer a level of familiarity, of consistency, of safety. Um, maybe it doesn't always feel like that. Well, I agree. I think that young people spend the majority of their time in school on a weekly basis. So they are constantly being affected by situations in school, experiences in school. And there's great opportunities there to develop our understanding of what might be going on for any given young person at any given time. I guess the other thing is, is, is that obviously there will be things going on in school, but equally there'll be things going on outside of school, which they bring into school. And my sense is, is that that is something which can be, can be difficult at times for them to, 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 to manage. And what we would say is that any behavior or even what might be seen as a misbehavior is often a point of communication actually from a young person and could well be much more associated with what is going on for them outside of school than the specifics of the interaction that has just happened. If a young person is being loud or disruptive, that can often be seen as a young person who really needs attention, who really needs support and, and maybe isn't getting that outside of a school situation. I wonder if a way of, of, of another way of describing that is, is, is that the behaviour is, is, is playing a, a role of safety for them, is that, that they're not sure, they don't have the language to express themselves, they don't have the language to, to say what's, what's going on for them. Yeah, I think you're right. Like you said, the, the kind of safety strategies that young people use all the time, that particular example of maybe withdrawing or being really quiet, that that's actually oftentimes a young person just trying to remain safe, trying to get through the day and us being able to understand that and, and go with the flow of that uh, can often contribute really positively then to their engagement with school and, and what they take from their educational setting. Consequently, I wonder if, if, if there are strategies or things that, that we might feel is, 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 is a good idea to explore. I think about the environment in particular. I think because I'm always at pains to let teachers know that we don't want more from them. You know, their, their timetables, their workload is already so jam-packed as it is. So any of the tips or guides that we might be providing aren't ones that should take up a whole load more of their time. So things like the environment, whether it is plants or colours or the seating arrangements, you know, do, is your class in rows where it's very regimented or can young people sit in a circle? Yeah, just building on, on that, I think it, in absolutely agree with everything you've said. It's just a sort of, sort of thinking for the, from the outset, it is so important that the students know what to expect. Um, the, the, the presence of unpredictability or, or, or sudden change it can be really, really difficult for some students, especially if they've experienced difficult situations. Um, or have other things going on for them. So, Kian, just to, 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 to wrap up this, this segment, I think what, we, what I think we've covered is kind of an acknowledgement that the schools are a, a, a central, predominant, familiar, consistent space for, for a child and a young person. And maybe there's some, some thinking that can happen within the school team um, and by individual teachers to help what what that space looks like, both the environment maybe, and, and also maybe some aspects of the, of the classroom management. Yeah, I think step one, we want to be curious about understanding what's going on for young people outside of the classroom and how that might be affecting their behavior inside the classroom. The second thing we're trying to say is we're not trying to put more work on teachers. We already know how much that they've got going on. But then maybe the, the thing that teachers and, and school teams can have a think about is the universal design of the classroom and, and making sure that it's a trauma-informed space, that young people are uh, having an input on what, on what it looks like, what's most comfortable to them, what feels safe, whether that's the structure of the year, the schedule of the classroom, 
or how the actual room looks itself and seating arrangements, colours, what's on the wall, those kinds of things.